The crew also participated in a range of efforts that would bond them into a crew and ensure that they were physically and mentally prepared for any mission scenario. So this included a week of training with the National Outdoor Leadership School, or Knowles, where the crew faced a week of kayaking against heavy winds. It also included a day in an altitude chamber to experience how their body reacts to different oxygen levels, and even included an underwater helicopter escape training simulation. And SpaceX Dragon uh, crew has tablets secured, restraints tightened, and visors down. SpaceX copies, crew are configured for entry. Five minutes until predicted calm blackout. We'll see you on the other side at 0925 Zulu. Copy 09250 on the other side of the black deck. Okay, and good comms there from crew that they are ready and configured for their return time. Oh. Um, and, you know, an, an aspect of that is to, to wrap up our, our discussion about training. That's a major training point for crew, understanding how their return phase is going to look so that they know, to, let's go ahead and call ground and let them know that we're ready for, for maintaining it. So training really is at the heart of any successful mission. You plan, you train, you fly in that order. Yeah, exactly. Training prepares every astronaut, even those very experienced like Peggy Whitson, mm -hmm. and she also did retraining with the AX4 crew. It's important for the crew to train together. Um, but this prepares them for any phase, any uh, potential scenario exactly in right. their mission. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. You know, and missions like this are important milestones for everyone involved, from the crew members who fly to those that they represent, to the host of scientists and engineers around the world who have an opportunity for their research or their technology to be tested in microgravity. Everyone learns from these missions. And for Axiom Space, this is at the heart of why we do these missions. We're building opportunities for others to advance what is possible and expand what is known. And we want to, be able, we want to enable every human everywhere to take part in this. Now, after a beautiful launch on June 25th, the AX4 crew docked with the International Space Station a little over a day later, opening the hatch and greeting the Expedition 73 crew on June 26th. The crew shared some good words in a welcoming ceremony uh, and an astronaut pinning um, that we don't have there, but did happen, uh, before quickly getting to work on their extensive itinerary. Now, each crew member brought with them a host of research, te technology demonstrations, and outreach objectives, ranging from human physiology to space radiation impact studies, and even some gardening while they were up there. So this crew maintained a very full timeline, but they prepared for this, part of their training. Each crew member wanted to ensure that every minute of this mission was utilized and that all of their objectives were hit. So Peggy, Shooks, Suave, and Tibor were ready to work with their time on board. Over the course of 18 days on board the station, they accomplished over 60 research activities as well as more than 20 outreach events. But as their time on station came to a close, the AX4 crew participated in a brief farewell ceremony where they said their goodbyes to the Expedition 73 crew. And now for more details on the incredible work performed by this Corona Orbit, check out AxiomSpace.com to see more. Yeah, I love that this crew did so much outreach. Uh, 20 events yeah. in 18 days is pretty remarkable. Yeah, it's <laughs> so pretty very impressive. Impressed, plus the 60 experiments exactly. on top of that. So. I mean, and as we discussed earlier, it was a huge priority for them to mm -hmm. be able to conduct those outreach events uh, for, the, for the people of their countries who may not have had a chance to talk to an astronaut, to understand why, yeah. why are we going to space? Now they have a better understanding of that. And like you mentioned earlier, it's get them started young. Let them understand the, the passion of it. I know that my, my nieces, my nephew, right, they, they're excited about space. Yeah. They, they want to be involved in space too. So I can only imagine getting a call from Tibor, getting a call from Suave and understanding what are we doing up there? Oh, that would be so awesome. Yeah. Now we are expecting that blackout period uh, coming up here in just about a couple mm -hmm. of minutes. Now this blackout period, this is when the Dragon spacecraft re-enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. What's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of plasma buildup as it's getting um, more through the atmosphere. And that plasma is getting to about 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, building up around the spacecraft. So we will be losing comms. Mm -hmm. This is uh, expected. Uh, today we're expecting it to last